So welcome everyone, buongiorno. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of my colleagues, we are thrilled to be here to showcase Sicily, one of Italy's most intriguing regions. My name is Gary Portuesi. I am the owner and managing director of Authentic Italy. We are a travel company that creates tailor-made experiences throughout Italy's diverse 20 regions. Before we get started with our webinar, I'd like to introduce Brittany Crown, who you've already met. Um, she's the webinar organizer and the wizard behind all the technology today. And she'll go through a couple of housekeeping rules. So Brittany. Sure. Hello everyone, I'm Brittany uh, and I coordinate virtual events and webinars. I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items to better your experience. And if you have a few questions as we go along, please post those in chat and make sure to send it to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see it. Chances are you're not the only one who had that question. Uh, also, we will begin spotlighting the primary speaker's video as we go along. But if at any point you're not seeing what you think you should, first look for the word speaker view in the top right corner and toggle that on instead of gallery view. So if you see gallery view, hit that button, switch it. Uh, so speaker view is what you're looking for. And if that doesn't fix it and the main speaker is still not on the main screen for you, up at the top where you see the three, the, the small rectangles of our faces, you should see three small dots if you hover over the photo. Click that and then select pin video and they will remain in that large window until you change it again to the next speaker. But again, assuming Zoom co cooperates with me, uh, I'll be managing that for you. Uh, finally, in just a little while, we're going to show a video and you'll want to turn your volume all the way up. And I think that's all I got, Gary. Carry Great. on. Great, thank you. <laughs> so today's webinar is entitled Savoring Sicily. And it's such an appropriate title since the feedback we consistently receive from our guests as they experience Sicily is one of sensory overload. This is what we've been hearing for the past 18 years. Truly, it's a magical place that hits all of the senses at once. Today, my colleagues and I will take you on a virtual tour of Sicily with many stops along the way. You'll meet my co-hosts, Sal, Anthony, Pepe, and Marcella. And it's a particularly bittersweet moment because we all were supposed to be on tour this week in Sicily. In fact, today we were supposed to be on Mount Etna having a wine tasting, but because of the pandemic, we've uh, moved it to June, 2021. And this is a reunion of sorts. My, background, my backdrop is of Scopello. It's, it's a real place, but I'm not there, unfortunately. Um, I'm not in Sicily. This is the first time in 43 years that I will not be going to Sicily this summer. Instead, I am, give me one second, show you where I am. Here I am. I'm actually in New York City. I am uh, at Degustibus Cooking School. Um, and you'll see a couple of my colleagues here on the New York side, and then others coming to you live from Sicily. So let's meet all of our co-hosts. First, let me introduce you to Salvatore Rizzo. He's the owner and director of the world-renowned Degustibus Cooking School located in the heart of New York. And in full disclosure, he's my husband as well. <laughs> Welcome, guys. So how long has it been that we've been going to Sicily together? We've been going to Sicily for 18 years. It's the first years. time, my 18th and your 40th, 43rd. 43rd, oh well. Next year. Next year. Next year in Sicily. Then next, I'd like to introduce you to Anthony Giglio. Anthony is the wine director for American Express Centurion Lounges. He's a contributing wine editor for <laughs> Food and Wine and a food critic. But most importantly, Anthony's a sommelier and my friend, and he co-hosts our group tours in Sicily. How are you, Anthony? Buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today for this very quick escape, but I won't lie. I would be much happier if we were all in Sicily together. Um, quickly, I need to confess to all of you that I might have the most fun job of all of us because I lead us to the most delicious places to drink in Sicily, which means in every direction. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 And next, uh, let's move to Sicily and meet our other co-hosts. I'd like for you to meet Marcella Amato, uh, who I consider to be the tour guide to the stars, and she's based in Palermo. Marcella. Wow, guys. Are. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm happy to be here with you. 
and I start showing you a little, little portion of my city. You can do that. Yes. So, Marcella, we met 18, uh, yeah, about 18 years ago. And what did I tell you the first time I met you? I said, you, you look, look like, like Sarah Jessica Parker. I was younger, my dear, at that point. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker, in case that just, yeah. uh, you, it didn't transmit. Yes, yes, But um, yes. yes, indeed. And here we are 18 years later. We've had a lot of great moments. Yeah. Um, a lot okay, of fantastic so let's on. Tours. Excellent. Let's move on to, uh, to Agrigento. Let's, uh, let's meet Pepe Mendola. Uh, Pepe is the owner of Pieces of Sicily. We also met in 2002, and we created a joint venture with Authentic Italy based in New York, and with Pepe and his team running all the operations in Sicily. Ciao, Pepe. ragazzi. Hello to everyone from Agrigento, the Valley of the Temples. And welcome, guys. Welcome. It's good to see everybody. This is our little reunion. Yeah. <laughs> we are very happy. We are very happy. I'm waiting for you guys. All right, we'll Please. get back to all of you a Please. little bit later. For now, um, what I'd like to do uh, before we actually start the tour, um, we'd like to show you a beautiful video that we've created um, to whet your appetite and get you into the mood for Sicily. Well, hopefully that got you into the mood. I apologize for the less than uh, ideal transmission. I think Zoom is a great platform, but someday they'll be perfecting their video and audio transmission. We will have a copy of this video if you like. We'll up upload it onto uh, YouTube and send out the, uh, the information. All right, um, so let's, uh, let's start with the tour. Uh, Brittany, can we get uh, map number one, please? So this is um, the DeLong ma wine map of Sicily. And I thought um, this is Anthony's suggestion. This would be a good place to start to show you um, the winemaking regions of Sicily. Um, what, what we will do is you'll see the various versions of this particular map indicating where we are as we journey around Italy. And what we typically do, not only with our group tours, but also for our clients, is we recommend a counterclockwise tour. So we'd start in Palermo, which is in the northwest corner, work our way through western Sicily, then down through the southern coast around Shaka and Agrigento, eventually making our way to the eastern, the southeastern part of Sicily, Syracuse, Noto area, and then eventually up the northeastern flank of Sicily, going past Catania and to Mount Etna, and we usually end our trip 
in Taormina. Um, great places to visit also the outer islands of the Aeolians to the north and Pantelidia to the southwest. Anthony, I love this map. I'm a map geek. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what we're showing here? Yeah, so on the bottom of the map there, it's a little bit cut off, but it says DeLong, and I would love for you to Google these because uh, they're made by a friend of mine named Steve DeLong, who's in London, and they're not only exceptionally detailed, um, really, really beautifully done, but they're also frameable. I, I, I have them hanging in my house, and he has so many great ones, including subway maps of wine regions that are really clever, that look like the New York subway system, but they're for France and California, and he has them in Italy, and it's way too complicated, but... Um, as far as the wine scene in Sicily, I like to call Sicily the new old world because winemaking there has really changed both dramatically and dynamically over the past three decades. And what makes it so easy for us Americans to understand Sicilian wine is that the majority of them are named by the grape, which is how most of us Americans talk about wine and drink wine and order wine. And I'll explain more about that as we move around the island. Great. Um, sounds good. Uh, Bernie, we could take the map down. Thank you. And uh, at this point, uh, I think we should start our tour. Uh, let's bring in Marcella, who is uh, our tour guide. And Marcella, you want to give a little overview of Sicily, and then we'll start. And sure. tell us who you are. I'm ready? Ha ha! The bells ringing. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to Sicily. Sicily is the biggest island in the Mediterranean. To cross it from west to east, it takes about three hours by car. And uh, let me tell you that uh, the island is the result of uh, 13 different rulers. So what you eat in Sicily, what you see in Sicily, the physiognomical characteristics, food, wine, art, history is just the result of all these uh, dominators and rulers that arrived here since the proto-history time to nowadays. Why everybody want to conquer our island for the geographical position between Africa and the rest of Europe? So. It's fantastic to getting around by car, for instance, because you will see a different landscape as soon as you move from east to west. It's like changes the, the, the pages of a book. So you can see olives, palms, trees, plants coming from all over the world. Just in the botanic garden of my city, we have more than 12,000 different species of plants. So it's very green, even if uh, it's so hot like today. And uh, so uh, Sicily is different according to the area where you will be. And uh, I would like to start with uh, Palermo, which is, uh, um, which is my city. Um, let me tell you that Palermo is considered the, the queen of the, the island, right? It's a very it's a vibrant city. It's a very charming city with a very strong identity. And a great way to experience Palermo's culture and get in touch with the local people are the food markets. Uh, we have three food markets in town. Normally we go to Capo, which is uh, the best place to try the local street food. I remind you arancine, the rice balls from arancia, which is the shape of the orange. What you call in America uh, Sicilian pizza, we call sfincione, which is the local pizza, it's a little bit higher than the normal one. And then we have a panelle, the chickpea, you will try next year, we are ready for that, as well as for Sicilian croquet. So street food is something very typical here. And the local food, it's uh, well known for its uh, freshness and the ancient roots. I told you, we are the result of 13 different rulers. So when you eat, you can recognize that this was brought by the Arabs and whatever. The highlights of my city, look where I am. This is a fantastic cloister. They back to the 13th century, belonged to the church of St. John's of Hermits. So one of the highlights is the Arab Norman itinerary, which is on the list of the heritage world sites, as well as many other cities or many other places in Sicily. So the highlights of Palermo is art, history, street food, and the palaces, the private palaces. I mean, um, you have the chance to uh, get into the palaces, still meeting, for instance, the Sicilian aristocracy, which is a very nice experience, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. So, yeah. And tell us, what is your favorite hotel in, uh, in Palermo? Sorry. Your favorite hotel? 
My I'll Spanish bet. to tell is Vila Gea, of course. <laughs> Vila Gea is the one belonged to, uh, it's on the point to be renovated right now. And uh, it was a private house at the beginning. So it's fantastic. It's a private house of a family called the Florio family. And now it belonged to Rocco Forte and will be open for you next year. It will be very nice, just facing the sea. Beautiful. So thank you for that. And um, we yes. usually have our guests fly into Palermo and spend some time there. Once we, uh, once we leave Palermo, we go to Western Sicily. You wanna tell us a little bit about uh, what there is to see and do in Western Sicily? Sure. So on the Western side, normally we stop to suggest which is a beautiful archaeological site where you can see just one Greek temple. Even if later on you will realize that the Greeks colonized the east coast of the island, as well as Agrigento, but we have just one Greek temple uh, in Segesta, as well as the theater. And you can reach the theater on top of the hill where you can have a fantastic landscape. The other place that usually we are visit is the Selinunte, which is the most uh, advanced point of a Greek colonization on the western side of the island. And the name comes from Selinon, which is the apium, the celery. So next year, when you are going to have a fantastic dinner at Planeta Foresteria, remember you have to check down the, 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 the plate, the celery, which is the coat of arms of Selinunte at the same time. So Selinunte, it's beautiful archeological site with the remains of many Greek temples. And then normally we arrive on top of the mountain in a place called the Erice, looks uh, Harry Potter uh, sad. And uh, it's, uh, very, yeah, it's very, very famous for Maria Grammatico. She produced a very good almond pastry cookies. So it's, uh, from there, you have a fantastic landscape. You will see Trapani. Trapani is the town from which you can take the hydrofoil in order to reach Egadi Island. So we have three islands just 45 minutes far away from Trapani, uh, Levanso, Marettimo, Favignana, and also Pantelleria. You have to fly there. It's very Arabic. So we still preserve the Arabic influence in the islands. Great. Thank you. So, Marcello, we'll see you a little bit later um, in the podcast, yeah? For a surprise. Right. See you later. Okay. <laughs> Let Ciao. me bring in. Ciao. Let Ciao. me bring back uh, Anthony and Sal. And um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what makes Western Sicily distinct in terms of food and wine. Um, you know, we're going to be staying at Planeta Foresteria. We're going to go to Planeta Winery. Uh, give us a little bit of, a, of an overview and, and show us some beautiful wines. Okay, so uh, as Marcella said, we, we head down the west coast, we pass Trapani, um, and then down towards Marsala. Uh, and Marsala in particular, the food, is, is, food and wine is just so exotic because you have um, aromas of butter and cinnamon attesting to the fusion between Arab staples and French patisserie ingredients, which arrived in Sicily via Naples in the eight, late 1800s. I'm thinking of like the crispy cannoli and uh, marzipan cassate filled with candied fruits and cream, biscotti with almonds and cocoa, fi cocoa and fig jam. Uh, Marsala also gives its name to the famous sherry-like wines of, uh, uh, developed by the wealthy British merchant John Woodhouse, whose house we actually see along the tour. Uh, in the late 1800s, he developed uh, Marsala to withstand long sea voyages during blockades with France. Um, Sicily would supply England with, uh, with fortified wines, but today winemakers in the same area, use these uh, islands' indigenous grapes like Grillo, Insolia, Graconico, and Sonica, Catarato, etc., to make crisp, dry wines. And for red, the West Coast is there in, in Sicily is all about the calling card red of Sicily, Nero Diavola. Nero Diavola. Um, there's also some international arrivals like Chardonnay, Viognier, Cabernet, Merlot, and Syrah. And on the magical volcanic island of Pantelleria, we find Zibibo, known in the rest of the world as Moscato di Alessandria that makes spectacular sweet pasita wines. But um, right now I'm drinking this beautiful Planeta La Segreta Bianco, 50% Graconico, 30% Chardonnay, 10% Viognier, 10% Piano. This is what we're handed when we walk into the Foresteria, which uh, we drink around the infinity pool before we dive in 
and drink, <laughs> we drink beers in the pool and, and we drink champagne and it's just some spritzes. Um, spritzes, a lot of Aperol spritzes happening. We also, um, we'll, we would see wines like this Cusumano Nero Davila on the wine list and in the bars and also another Nero Davila by Morgante. So just a few to show you that I, that I have here at home. And Anthony, the, the La Sagrata is a great wine to drink now, right? During the summer. Yeah. Oh, God, it's very light. Beautiful. Yeah, like they're, they're wines that like, although of course they're great with food, they're terrific on their own just as a quaffing wine to sip outside. Ice, ice cold. Yeah. And we, um, we spend some time at the actual winery. Not only do we stay at the Foresteria, but we actually go to the, the Planeta family's winery. Oh my God. And, and then Kyle, Kiara yeah, Planeta, our, our favorite hostess, uh, Kiara Planeta, uh, we, have this, we have these crazy meals in this ridiculously enormous converted, is it a barn that's it's now this magnificent dining room? Yes. The table is 40 feet long. There's linens and candelabras and a lot of gaudy, a lot of gaudy <laughs> Capodimonte uh, candelabras and all that crazy <laughs> stuff. But the, they, they make fabulous food, including their baked, Sicily's famous baked pastas, which are the Annalini with um, with eggplant and they bake it in it like a timpano. It's just uh, just so good, so so good. And ladies and gentlemen, what I love about that is that when you go there, these people have been working for the Planeta family for so many years. So it's like going back home, and they're so excited to see all five of us come back with a whole new group of people. And they really excel in the fact of trying out and making some exceptional dishes. I want to note another thing, just a little reminder that chicken marsala is not made in marsala. <laughs> it is an American thing. Okay, so let's just make that a point clear right there. <laughs> let's make it clear. Great. And what about your, there's a, an amazing restaurant that we go to. So my, our favorite, well, one of my favorites and my husband's is Davitorio. It's this wonderful, exceptional seafood restaurant that Pepe, who you met earlier, um, turned us on to, and it's right on the beach, and they have the most pristine seafood, but the most important thing that they have is this red shrimp from Mazzara that you eat crudo, raw, which is some beautiful Sicilian olive oil and a sprinkling of salt that is absolutely to die for. Well, we can just talk on, go on and on talking about <laughs> uh, the incredible food and wine experiences in Western Sicily, but we need to move on with our tour. And, um, but hang on, because we have a little bit more to talk about. Um, so as we go south, southwest, um, we hit the town of Shaka. And then next we get to Roccoforte's incredible resort called Verdura Resort, which has been around for about 10 years. An extraordinary experience. Uh, they have a private beach. They have two 18 hole golf courses, like real golf courses. Um, the PGA best rated. that exist, PGA rated. Um, but their food and wine experiences are also lovely. It's a true five-star hotel, and it's very close to Agrigento, which we'll be getting to in a second. But there are two experiences in that part of Sicily that um, I want to talk about. The first, Sal and I kind of explored last year called Sant'Angelo Muxaro. Never did before. A tiny town, 2,000 inhabitants on top of a hill. And it's a real town, it's authentic. You wanna talk a about the experience there? So we got there and it's this little town and they led us to this wonderful, um, probably 200 year old bakery where they actually had people outside and they're feeding you this freshly baked bread that people come from all and over. And the pizza. And the pizza. But then we led us, they led us to this wonderful home and it basically became a block party, like the block party of the 1970s when everybody was out and there was food around and here we were, the, the tourists that came in and it was quite a special moment to walk around this town and it was so, uh, people were so grateful for us to be there and actually walk around and actually experience the town and its culture. And it's really quite unique. I mean, there is some historical significance, but we take our clients to, to visit the cheesemonger and the baker and Absolutely. the pizzeria and on and on it goes. It's an extraordinary experience and it's all real and they're all local people. And it's very authentic. <laughs> very much so. And then from there, there's what I consider to be one of the showpieces of Sicily and that's Regaliali. It's right in the center of Sicily. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you two, Anthony and Sal, talk about how <laughs> extraordinary how magical the experiences of regaliali oh my god i mean regaliali just the word alone it's a it's a regal wondrous estate in the middle of the island where count alberto tasca who we've met many times holds court 
in this restored balio, uh, whose centerpiece is a courtyard featuring a massive magnolia tree under which we dance at night when uh, we plan a surprise <laughs> for the guests after dinner. Um, I love uh, co-hosting wine tastings there with our ebullient host, Corrado Muraji, Morigi, um, in their gorgeous underground cave. On the way to the cave, we pass a flag of the United States, but in the, in the, uh, in the star column is the map of Sicily. And the, the story is that Sicily, after World War II, asked the United States to become a, the 51st state. I just love that trivia. Imagine if that were true. Um, also, I, by the way, that, also uh, while we're there, we take a cooking class with Fabrizio Lanza, whose mother founded Anatasca Lanza Cooking School 31 years ago. And um, with Fabrizio, we tour her enormous, really, I mean, spectacular organic, organic farm and her herb gardens. We forage for herbs. We cook lunch with her together. Then we feast at this massive table in her barn, which also acts as a yoga studio, by the way. For <laughs> uh, before taking, yes. Before we all collapse into the, uh, the the lounge chairs around the beautiful pool for a nap. Um, did I mention we we take a lot of naps on this tour after all the food and wine tours? Um, but wait, I have one more thing to say. I'm remembering one nap in particular, lying on a raft in the infinity pool at uh, Regaliali's Capo Faro Estate, which is on the island of Salina, where the waiters just kept pouring. Didime, their, their distinctly dry version of Malvasia into my glass as I just like draped it over to the, the, the patio. And, uh, and later we visited the Howder brothers to, to taste their beautiful Malvasias that are from bone dry to, to, uh, to beautifully sweet before a sunset ride and a swim off the coast. That's what I'm thinking about right now. Wow, I'm with you. I, I couldn't agree more than I got to say when you go into Regular Alley, just the idea of like when you pull up into this regal estate, the rooms are so quaint. The food is exceptional. Everything that you eat in Regalayali is either grown or raised on property. It's, I mean, from the breakfast to, to, the, to the chicken eggs, to the lamb dishes that they make. Fabrizia, when you do the cooking classes, it's quite unique because it's very intimate and she's an exceptional teacher. But one thing that we cannot forget about Regalayali is that gorgeous pool and, and the open refrigerator with the copious amounts of wine that they have there for us, that all we're doing is just opening and drinking. So hence the naps that come thereafter. It's really quite a spectacular place. And I have to say, it's something that is probably one of the highlights of the tour. We hear it all the time. Great, thanks guys, we need to move on. Um, so we are going to then move, continue moving um, east, and we get to Agrigento, which is, I always say, if there's one thing you see in Sicily, if you had to be helicoptered in and out in just a couple of minutes or hours, then it would be the Valley of the Temples. And the temples. Let me get to one cafe. Take it from here. Hi, guys, again. We are in Agrigento. So, now it's a great pleasure for me to introduce to you one of uh, my best friends, and also one of the most fun and charming Sicilian storytellers, Signore e Signori, Lorenzo the Magnificent. Ciao, ciao to everybody, benvenuti, welcome. Welcome to Agrigento, welcome to the Valley of uh, the Temples. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm very happy to join this webinar because we're talking, you're talking about food and wine which is a great, I'm a foodie, so uh, I love it, I love it. So welcome to Agrigento, behind me, the Concordia Temple. This is great, this is Greek, this is authentic. It's the Concordia Temple, it's dating back 430, 440 BC, and is still there standing. This is one of the three best Greek temples existing in the world. So. This is a, something unique, is a highlight, something that is a wow. When I get people here from everywhere from the world, hey, why never come before? I didn't know about it. So this is really, really worth it. This is a must to see. Well, um, I want to tell you something. I love uh, wine. I love this subject. You know, nearby this temple, there is a winemaker, which was a card in the soil. This winemaker maker is dating back about uh, uh, the 4th century AD, just proving that already during the Christian time in this area, the early Christians were making wine. And 
of course, when the Greeks came over in this city, that back those days they called the Akragas, the highland, we are on the top of a ridge, the Greeks, of course, they came over looking for land, for making wine, for growing wheat, for uh, living. This was like the American dream. And uh, in this area, they were making wine. And the Greeks had a custom, had a ritual that they really loved. You know, at the end of the meal, they were still laying in the track line and they were keeping, starting to drink and drink and drink and drink. And meanwhile, they were drinking, they were hearing music, musicians playing for them. So they were hearing the music, decline, drinking and talking. Talking about nice, lovely things, especially love. But as much they drunk, the, the subject became a funnest and lighter and, uh, you know, well, the Greeks called this ritual symposium. Yes, of course, today we use it for business, but no way. Back those days, the symposium was a time for drinking, chill out, and talking about love and have fun. And today, how do we call it? Happy hour and aperitivo. So you see, uh, it's still existing, the Greek symposium, just we call it in a different way. And my suggestion is, once you come to Sicily, you can't miss a Greek gentle, you can't miss uh, these uh, beautiful spots where there is the Concordia temple, but also many other beautiful temples. We are in an area surrounded by almond trees, olive trees, uh, and uh, look, behind me, the Mediterranean Sea. There is a beautiful sea, over, there is a beautiful view overlooking uh, the sea. And you know, after the tour of the valley, I love uh, to guide the people in the city center. Why? To enjoy the aperitivo in a trendy wine bar. And, you know, this is Agrigento. And I really uh, want to tell you, you are welcome to come here. And then, now, ladies and gentlemen, signore e signori, there is a special performance from you here in Agrigento. La Casa del Musical, the House of Musical, prepares a special performance for you, so enjoy the show and I hope to see you soon in Agrigento. Ciao ciao and arrivederci. Ciao a tutti. Hi everyone. Siamo alla Casa del Musical di Agrigento. From Casa del Musical, Sicily. Qui abbiamo un pianoforte. So here's a piano e tanti ragazzi italiani and a few Italian singers la maggior parte siciliani e siamo, e siamo qua per farvi sentire un po' di musica italiana and we have a little Italian music for you guys so enjoy and so non sono così non ritorni mai più e ti dicevo le mani e la faccia di più e mi sono da te e cominciamo a volare nel cielo infinito Tintarella di luna Tintarella colorante Tutta la tua casa è finito Sopra il vento tu dei gatti E se c'è la luna piena I gatti i gatti Cigolando se ne va, il fiume scorre lento, usciando sotto il fumo, il fumo scrudente in cielo dorme tutta la città.
Bravissimi. Thank you so much, Marco and team. This was wonderful. Very, very nice. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We, um, we continue our tour now. We go east, um, and we are going to introduce you now to Valeria Di Mauro, who is one of our tour guides um, based in Siracusa. So let's show map number five. Um, and Valeria, Hi. can you hear us? Hi, Valeria. Hi, hello. Yes. Yes, I'm Valeria. Very nice to meet you. Tell us where you are, Valeria. Okay, actually, I'm in the Duomo Square. That's the beautiful Salotto of Ortigia. Ortigia is the oldest part of the town of Siracusa. Actually, it's an island of one and a half square kilometer. It's part of the town, but that's an island. It's so beautiful, all surrounded by the sea. But let me tell you something before we talk about my hometown. Driving from Agrigento, we might stop in Piazza Marina, where there is a beautiful villa with huge mosaics. Going back to the Roman time, the owner probably was uh, one of the four emperors uh, at the end of the fourth century uh, AD. And this huge villa, composed by several rooms, uh, all decorated with mosaics, uh, uh, representing scenes from mythology. There is a beautiful room with um, the ladies with bikini. We think that we invented the bikini. We are so wrong because the bikini already existed at the Roman time on the fourth century AD. And you can see on the mosaics that this beautiful uh, representation of the ladies in bikini playing the ball and ball uh, in those uh, representations. Um, actually, it's a huge villa with several rooms uh, divided in, in three different levels. Uh, um, from a pretend, from a Piazza Marina, sorry, we can move. Uh, to Siracusa, that's my hometown. Uh, well, one of the highlights is for sure Ortigia. Uh, actually, I'm in the Duomo Square. Behind me is the cathedral of uh, or, no, Siracusa. That was a temple dedicated oh, yeah. to Can we have, can we have a, an actual nice shot of the, of the church? Of course, of course, of course, of uh, course, we can. Uh, I'm walking around uh, and um, the facade is Baroque. But uh, as I told you before, there was an ancient temple uh, built uh, on the 5th century before Christ. Uh, there are 2,500 years of history left uh, in this church because that was reused by the Byzantines uh, as a basilica by the Arabs. Uh, can you see the church now? Okay. That's the Duomo. That's the facade, actually, of the Duomo. And um, it's Baroque because uh, the previous facade from the Norman time collapsed during the earthquake of 1693. There was a huge earthquake that destroyed uh, 40 little towns of the southeastern side of Sicily. Siracusa was not destroyed, actually, it was badly damaged. The facade of the cathedral collapsed. And, um, but what is important uh, is the history in this building, uh, 2,100 years of history. Greek temple first, uh, then Byzantine basilica, then Arab mosque, then a basilica again during the Norman period, and today is our cathedral. And everything is left inside. And um, what we have here in Ortigia also is a Jewish section. Uh, the Jewish community of Siracusa was uh, the most important Jewish community in Sicily, the oldest one for sure, and the richest one. Uh, we know that before the Inquisition, uh, the biggest one was the one in Palermo, but still Siracusa had the richest uh, Jewish community in Sicily. We have a Jewish section. Uh, we used to have a synagogue that became a church uh, after the Inquisition in 1492. And um, we found uh, recently an ancient mikvah, ritual bath. Uh, it's the oldest mikvah they found up to now in Europe, dating back to the 7th century after Christ. Uh, 80 meters underground level, they found uh, these uh, three pools uh, filled with fresh pure water that was used by the Jews for the rituals. Uh, in special moments of their life. And uh, there is a place 
that today is a church, the Church of San Giovannello, there was the synagogue. We have some inscriptions left inside, uh, confirming that there was a, a synagogue before. We have also documents telling us about that. And we also have a Greek theater, Roman theater, uh, all Greek and Roman remains. So Syracuse was the capital of the uh, Magna Grecia. It was a very quite famous, uh, glorious uh, town. Uh, there was a moment in the ancient history that Syracuse was uh, probably so popular, so powerful, probably never been afterwards. And um, driving further south, we go to Ragusa, Noto, Monica. All these towns are very baroque towns uh, because they were all destroyed by the earthquake in 1693. And um, Built in a typical Sicilian Baroque style, all decorated with these brackets uh, representing scenes of the lifestyle in that period, 18th century, um, after Christ, of course. It's a special, simple Baroque style. It's not so decorated. It's a late Baroque style. Uh, balcony with uh, uh, this, uh, we call duck chest shaped balcony, convex balcony. Uh, we have a tradition saying that the women coming out on the terrace, uh, they can fit their wide skirt in this uh, concave part of the balcony. But that was uh, a way to create the movement in the facade, light and dark uh, in the facade. Well, lady, can I ask you a question? Yes, of course. Tell us about uh, the favorite place to go to in Noto for ice cream. Well, um, there are several places uh, in Noto where you can go. There is a famous one uh, that is, uh, uh, oh, tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're gonna get there, oh. that's okay. No worries, oh. but thank you there so is, much. We, we are now in Noto. Ragusa, Modica. Yes, of course. When you drive, when you walk to, uh, to Noto in the main street, uh, in Corso Vittorio Emanuele, there are so many bars. Um, there is um, one which is quite famous. Uh, the, you, we usually take our people, tell you the name because I just forgot the name. That's okay. Can we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. So we're going to move on. Thank you, Valeria. Um, You're welcome. Town. Ciao. We'll see you next Ciao. Week. <laughs> and now I'm going to invite back, ciao, ciao, bacio. I'm going to invite back um, Anthony and Sal. Come on back. Um, so the, some of the very interesting, well, the only DOCG wine in all of Sicily is produced in this area, right? Anthony, you want to tell us a little bit about it? And then For we're sure. going to talk about, hold on a second, we're going to also talk about the Michelin, the Michelin stars. stars that are raining down in Sicily in that area. So let's go with you, Anthony. Okay, so Sicily's southeast corner offers um, lower elevations and higher temperatures that make it prime red wine country and the source of Sicily's only DOCG, Cerasuolo di Vittoria. Um, uh, Neradavala is Sicily's, is Sicily's calling card grape, I said earlier, but here they, it must be a mandatory 50 to 70 percent of the base of Cerasuolo di Vittoria mixed with the fragrant Frappato grape, which I also have a great example here from Coast, who we've visited in the past. Hard to see, I think, with the way the reflection comes off. But um, Cherosuolo means cherry, and the wines brim with cherry and berry aromas and flavors, um, underscored by hints of licorice and leather. I have a beautiful example here. Um, you also find amazing women making wine all over the island, of course, but here in particular in the southeast, you have Ariana Occupinti, who's trailblazing the natural wine movement, uh, opening her winery at the age of 21, she being a member of the Coast uh, winemaking dynasty. Um, Francesca Planetta, who's a member of the Planetta family, we visit them on the West Coast, and has emerged as a leader in sustainable production across the entire island. They have five estates, but one here in particular. And then one of our favorites, Maria, Maria Angela Cambria from Cotonera, who we visit um, on the southern slope of Mount Net. They're making marvelous wines in that rugged terrain. And I will say, Anthony, can you talk about the variations of two different bottles? Why Coast is, uh, the bottle is shaped like that versus the other one? So, uh, so the, uh, the Val Delicate Cerasuolo is a classic Bordeaux-shaped bottle because, you know, a wink towards wines that are blended like Bordeaux and, and with a classic high shoulder. But the Coast, Coast is all about making wines in the ancient style. So like when we went, I'll never forget, we took a group there years ago and when we opened, we walked into the winery, it was a big barn. We opened the doors and there's nothing in there. And then you look down on the ground and there were um, terracotta picture-like um, 
like uh, what are they called in the street? The uh, the giant um, the rounds the metal. What am I thinking? Manhole, manhole covers. Manhole covers, but they were terracotta, <laughs> and the wine is all underground in ancient amphorae, like they made in the Roman era. They're wi they're lined with beeswax, and they make the wine ferment underground, and it stays beautifully cool. And so everything is is sort of towards like you know old fashioned bottles and and uh, and styling of the bottle. So it's a little bit impractical for your wine rack, but that just means if you buy it, drink it right away, which they're going to do tonight with dinner. Cheers. <laughs> and can I just say that is my last meal wine. I say it all the time. The Cerecero de Victoria is my last meal wine. I love that wine. All right, good to know. Good to know. Just to just to put that in the will. But let's talk about the restaurants for a second. Yeah, we've been to many. We've been to those restaurants, and I have to say, you have Il Duomo with Chicho Sultano. You have La Madia with what? Um, Pino Cotaya. Pino Cotaya. My my goodness, that, that that wonderful restaurant. But I have to say, these are just spectacular, well-renowned restaurants that truly are so unique and we have the experience and the ex and actually the opportunity to go and have this dinner mostly by ourselves we'll take over the whole we restaurant will. and actually be with those rest uh, those chefs in fact uh, on the tour that we were supposed to be on last night would have been our meal at locanda don serafino which, which also has two michelin stars and it's in a cave it's really quite exceptional it's exceptional i mean it's beautiful but the, but when you walk around the restaurant i mean it's inside this cave but there's these areas where you could sit down but after dinner we have those we have the aperitivo in that little area that's quite stunning and again the hospitality of the sicilians is so renowned because they're so appreciative of the tourism but they do love to make sure that people are well taken care of and that comes from everybody from the home to the restaurants. Okay, we'll get back to you guys a little bit later when we get up to Mount Etna. Um, and as we continue our journey, can we show map number six, please? Um, we are gonna be moving our way from the southeastern part of Sicily up the east coast past Catania, which is where the so second largest city in Sicily and where typically we have our clients flying out of Catania. Remember, at the beginning of the broadcast, we had started in Palermo, people fly into Palermo, they fly out of Catania. So as you go a little bit more north, um, you hit Mount Etna, the largest volcano, largest active volcano in all of Europe. Um, and north of that is Taramina. So I'm going to now invite our friend Francesco Emi and uh, Alfio, who is who are on Mount Etna, to tell us a little bit about um, the program. How are you? You good? You want to tell us a little bit about what I'm you're fine, doing? Man. You? We're good. We're good. Okay. Wait a minute. Here we are. We are at the slope of Mount Etna, and uh, we are here to introduce a little bit uh, what we do uh, in this area on Mount Etna. Mount Etna is, uh, as you know, one of the largest uh, and the highest and most active volcano of Europe. But contemporary, it's uh, a gentle volcano, so a place where we live, uh, where we live every day, a place uh, where we bring uh, around uh, tourists. Uh, our work is uh, to let people enjoy this uh, uh, magnificent uh, uh, place. So, just to have an idea, Mount Etna is, uh, is uh, roots into the Mediterranean Sea and uh, goes up up to about 11,000 feet. On the way up, uh, you can see from uh, tropical plants up to continental trees. And uh, we have amazing uh, landscape. You can walk uh, from uh, a desert area to beautiful uh, forest of birch, just to have an idea. And uh, right now, for example, we are at the, at the feet of Mount Etna on the north uh, face of the mountain, just on top of uh, and a huge lava flow that uh, touch uh, the valley very uh, long time ago. But uh, it seems that we are in the middle of nowhere, but uh, it's not. So actually, Alfio can tell you that uh, we are just around the corner of the most important place in the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, guys. So 23, 2400 feet above sea level, 25 minutes from Taormina, not far away from the summit of Mount Etna, and for sure, very, very close, according with the analogist and the agronomist, very close to the best winery, which are located on the north side of Mount Etna. So waiting for you, waiting for our beautiful guests, waiting to restart our hiking and 
and a beautiful experience with you. That's great. Can you, can you show us a little bit of the scenery? Is it possible? Yes, of course. Just a moment. I'm so tortured. actually, right now, we are facing uh, the north side. So let's uh, think that we are pointing the mainland and uh, Mount Etna is just behind us. But unfortunately, it's a little bit covered by uh, clouds. So you can see these uh, beautiful broom trees blooming around us. Some uh, uh, Valeriana flowers and uh, one of our vehicles to go around uh, in places like that. That's great. Thank you so much. These guys are truly, they are, not only are they expert guides, but they're, they're volcanologists, they're scientists, they're hikers, they, um, they're into wellness. They, they really are an incredible resource for us and very dear friends. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. See you soon. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Let me invite back Anthony and, and Sal. Um, I think, um, you know, I'm from the western part of Sicily, but I have to say, I have to admit that my favorite Sicilian wines are on Mount Etna. <laughs> it's probably because I love Burgundy so much, but don't tell anybody that because I'll be, they'll be taking away my Italian citizenship if that's the case. <laughs> uh, I, that's really funny you say that, Gary, because so my wife Antonia is from uh, the, the north side of Etna, so in the Messina province, right? Literally, if we just go straight over as the crow flies, Messina province, where she is near um, Patti, let's say, in Milazzo, uh, I've been going there for 22 years, and the wines there are pretty terrible. They've actually been, like, <laughs> of all the island, they're the least interesting wines, at least until the last decade. I told you, Sicily has really amped up for the last three decades, and in the last decade in particular, this area where we are is a hot spot. Even Etna wasn't talked about two decades ago. When we first started our tours, we didn't even go to Etna because no one was talking about it, right? But now we have in Milazzo, Palenta has a, a winery there, so that'll be 10 minutes from our house. I can't wait to get back there to see it. But Mount Etna is alive in every way and in every sense. It groans and smolders practically every time we're there. Um, the vineyards are planted at nearly 4,000 feet, which represent the highest vineyards in all of Europe, and the wines do not disappoint. The racy high acid reds made with the grape Narello Mascalese that are called simply Etna Rosso are often compared to the best of both Piedmont and Burgundy. Um, and the white wines made with Caracante have single-handedly led the way to uh, wine writers using the term salinity in wines, which we never did before because they literally are being blown all day by the sea. The sea air comes in, the sea air um, literally infiltrates the grapes and you actually taste salinity. It's amazing, but not in a, in a negative way, in a really positive way, like a savory way. Um, I want to show you what I have here. I have uh, Benante's, we love going to we go to Benante every time and we literally walk up Mount Etna and we see all the different grapes and then we have a beautiful lunch there and we taste um, all of their wines, but they're white. This is their Etna Bianco that I absolutely love, made with 100% Caracante. Um, I also have from um, Cotinera, one of their beautiful Etna Rossos. One of the, we also visit her for dinner, Mariangela. And this is a wine I just discovered recently at, um, at Verve, where all, most of these wines came from, uh, from uh, Calabretta, which is a non-DOC. Uh, uh, called Cala Cala, so they don't yet they don't say anything about Etna on here, but it's from Etna, and it's from his best vines. It's a big blend, and Cala Cala I learned is the onomatopoeia for gulping wine. Cala 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 Cala. How about that? It's great. I love that, and I love that you used racy. It's a racy. It's fantastic. Great work. The acidity of these wines are beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, and gonna, Anthony, can you briefly talk about Benantes and the and their vines? How old their vines are? Oh my gosh! So so by the way, so if you if you're if, if you're a little bit of a wine geek and you've heard of the word phylloxera, we always talk about phylloxera, which is too long to talk about here, but it is literally the worst gift that America gave to Europe. We they sent us in the 1860s. They sent us their beautiful wine grapes from France and Italy and Spain, and we sent them back Concord grapes with a microscopic root louse that destroyed nearly every single vine on the continent of Europe for 50 years. And the only ones that survived were super high altitude like Etna. So we go up into the, we walk up to the vineyards and we're seeing some of the, the pre phylloxera vines that grow in like a bush style. They're low to the ground, but they're high enough that phylloxera has altitude sickness and can't get up there. So you're, they're making wines with vines that are ancient, ancient, ancient by most wine standards, just magical. All right, we need to move on. We're running out of time, but thank you. Um, we are close to the end of our tour. And um, one of the special places that we 
go to um, is um, a beautiful Raleigh and Chateau property called Monaci della Terrenere. And I'd like to invite Giovanna um, and her colleagues to join us. She is on location at Monaci. It's the grand finale. It's the place um, that we will be staying the last couple of nights on Mount Etna. So Giovanna, um, please take it from here. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, I'm here with Francesco, the uh, Hi, food and everybody. beverage manager. Um, I'm the general manager here at Monaci delle Terre Nere. L allow me to say it's a corner of paradise located on Mount Etna slopes, 500 meters above the sea level. We just became a Relay Chateau just a few months ago, months ago and that's uh, an amazing goal for us because this is really a unique place. I mean, all, everyone says it's unique, but Monaco is really unique. We have 27 suites and villas scattered in a property of 62 acres with, uh, full of vineyards, uh, orchards, we think that the wines and all the vegetables uh, and the fruits that we use in our relay. I don't know if you can have a look at the, at the view behind me. Uh, relaxation, connection with the, with the nature. Uh, here, the social distancing became a luxury. I mean, became luxury because it's a place connected with the nature. Just have a look. We can see all the rooms has sea view because even if we are on Mount Etna on an active volcano, we only are 500 meters above the sea level and the sea is all around us. So it's in a very strategical position uh, only 25 minutes from Taormina. So you can have, I mean, you're going to be hosted in a very quiet place in which you can feel what the Etna energy means. And it can be discovered everywhere all around us. And if Francesco would help me, let's yes, go sure. a little bit behind just, we, we, I just want you to feel the peace, the peaceful atmosphere that can be enjoyed in a place which is absolutely not in the middle of nowhere. And I don't know if you can see the colors of this place. Yes, we can. It's beautiful. It's really an experience. We are so happy to, to have the chance to show you this place. It's very close to everywhere. I mean, all the most uh, um, important uh, play, I mean, uh, sites in uh, eastern, in the western side of Sicily, but you can have a relax here. You can really disconnect yourself and you can feel, you, you can understand the history of this part of the island, the food, the wines, but not only, also the, the landscapes. I mean, we're, you are always all invited to stay with us at Monaci. That, that will be a real memorable experience absolutely i can attest Hi, everybody we wait for you here at Terenere, uh, surrounded by the green hills of the mount etna wonderful thank you thank you both and, and we gary look you know i mean gary sal you have <laughs> several yes we do we thank know you. it all too well yes we do we look forward to it thank you so much ciao, Giovanna. waiting all for right. you Ciao, ciao, Gary. Ciao, 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 ciao. All right, so this concludes our tour. Um, we, we didn't include Taormina, which is an important part of um, any visit to Sicily, but um, that is always um, offered as, a, as an optional uh, post-tour um, in conjunction with our group tours. So now we're going to have two, if you can hang on for a little bit, two very special performances, and then we're done. So let's go back to Marcella who's in a very special place in Palermo. Marcella? Yes, 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 I'm ready. Are you ready? We so are. I'm, we are. Going, I'm going to show you the workshop of Franco Cuticchio, who is a Franco Cuticchio, is very popular in Palermo. He's one of the most famous family that has been uh, making puppets or knights 
for their shows for four generations. And, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, here I am. And uh, I'm going to show you the classical repertory of them. It's the fight uh, among uh, two men to get uh, Angelica's love. Guys, I'm coming, so I'm going to show you the puppet show of Franco Cuticchio. Guys, you can start. <laughs> All right. Mia cara Angelica, ho lasciato la città di Parigi per amor tuo. Quanto sei bella Angelica, di più ti guardo, più bella mi senti. Davvero Orlando, ed io mi sento la donna più felice del mondo. Ma che bella voce che hai Angelica, ma non mi dai un bacio? Ma sì Orlando. Adesso, mia cara, la avvicineremo alla spiaggia e così potresti imbarcare. Ehi! Che vedo! Mio cugino Orlando qui a corteggiare Angelica mentre sotto le mura della città di Parigi si fanno battaglie. In alto, per il momento non posso venire a Parigi perché ho promesso ad Angelica di accompagnarla da suo padre. Sappi, Orlando, che io... Sono follemente innamorato di Angelica, quindi vattene via e vai a combattere. Sei la piccolina. Non lo sai toccare la mia Angelica, sai? Vattene via e lasciati in pace. Vai anche sto. E allora, Orlando, prendi la tua lingana e vieni in meco al combattimento. <ride> e credi che tu, io ho paura di te? Angelica mia cara, metti da parte. Oh mio Dio, Orlando! Non te vede! Orlando, prenditi la mia santa e vieni me con il combattimento. Allora! Marcella! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Thank you, this is wonderful. We have one more quick performance. So, may I... In... Grazie. May I invite um, Marco? for our final performance and to say goodbye. Okay, just a second, just a second, guys. Guys? Marcella. Yes, they want to say goodbye to you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, sorry, these are, can you, can I, can you see them? No, we cannot. No? No. Because I would like to show you them. Okay, uh, hi. and his amazing son. <laughs> puppet masters. Grazie. Yes, Grazie. Puppet masters. Grazie, guys. I see you next year. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao. All right, can we bring Marco on? Marco Saviteri and the, and the group me. performance. Okay. Credetemi è accaduto di notte su di un ponte, guardando l'acqua scura con la dannata voglia di fare un tuffo su. D'un tratto qualcuno alle mie spalle, forse un angelo vestito da passante, mi porta via dicendomi così. Me meraviglioso, ma come non ti accorgi di quanto il mondo sia meraviglioso. Meraviglioso, perfino il tuo dolore potrà apparire poi meraviglioso. Ma guarda intorno a te, vedoni che hanno fatto, che hanno inventato il mare. Di un mattino, l'abbraccio di un amico, il viso di un bambino meraviglioso. Thank you all. All right, everybody, join us. Let's say bye. See you in Sicily. Bye. Everybody, join us. So thank you all for taking part today in our webinar.
for those of you who are listening who have joined us today, we're going to have the recording available. Um, if you're interested in our tour, you can write to me at info at authenticitaly.com or you can write to Anthony Giglio, you can write to Sal at Degustibus. It'll be posted on the website. It'll be posted on our website, on Sal's website, and, and available to Anthony as well. And this concludes our tour of Sicily. We hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing you in Sicily, all of you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao guys. Ciao. Bye bye. Ciao, guys. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Arrivederci. Bye. Ciao. See you soon. Bye.